you were hard to characterize before being hard to characterize was cool. Well, right? <laughs> you were art rock, you were neo psychedelia, you were a folk singer, you were a singer songwriter. It's really hard to find one lane for you to be in, right? Yeah, I'm unmarketable. Um, you always take it to a dark place. I think it's a positive, actually. I'm I think that, if, that, that you, you create more opportunities for people to move towards your music or towards you if you're not only one thing. It's basically like times of day. You know, the light, the angle from the sun falls on. You think about the angle of the sun on a, yeah. on a building. You know, sunrise, mid-morning, noon, heading down towards sunset. On a, or like a tree or something. Things look completely different according to the the direction of the light and the angle and the angle of right. the light and the strength of the light and I would say that <clears throat> my, what I do varies enormously depending on how you look at it right you know so I am all of those things or none of them and uh, I think it's interesting you know. as you said earlier you're picking consciously elements from different influences you've had in different eras and that probably cons is consistent with the idea that you're hard to pigeon to pigeonhole or to p pin down I guess I like I like more things than I might seem to I, I mean, I'm essentially, I emanate from 1967. I emanate right. from that, that, or that window in time between 66 and 69, so between Revolver and Abbey Road, which right. of course is now sacred ground. It is. You know, all the old rock writers, are, a lot of them my age or whatever, and they all just keep going, right. oh my God, Revolver's coming up, they found an extra 15 tracks, you know, whatever it is. And Giles Martin's discovered that actually the whole thing was recorded on 24 track, not four track, if you look at it the right way. Yep. So there's endless variations on those same old Beatles songs. Paul and George are still out there. Um, I mean, Paul and whoops, and, and Ringo. Ringo. I saw yeah. them both this year in yeah. good shape. But that, you know, all I mean is that that f focus keeps coming back on that. Yeah. It's not like, well, say back in 19... So 1969 was 50 years from the Treaty of Versailles. And so j hot jazz was just incubating. Yep. But not many people in 1969 were going, hey man, I'm so glad that hot jazz album is being re-released. Go on, listen to this, you know. Uh, wow, Louis Armstrong will be along in a minute. Right. Woohoo, you know, it's, th by then that stuff was incredibly over and passe, but now Abbey Road and all that stuff, it, it's still current. So what I do, kind and, and of, because of distribution, yeah. new generations yeah, are discovering exactly. it for the and first time. And right. Giles Martin remixes, and the right. carcass of the recording industry always being able to make a few dollars out of the Beatles. Correct. And so all those factors, and the fact that music yeah. itself has changed. Music yeah. is n music appeared to be slightly radical. Pop music had a, a dangerous element then, which is gone now. Like, pop music is its great, it's as important, but it's not threatening. Not a ton of Rock music now, right? knows yeah. its place. Yeah. You know, it's purpose-built auditoriums. You can go and buy your concessionary beer. Uh, you, you, you'll be shot dead if you pull out a cigarette, but apart from that, you're fine. You can smoke weed, you know. I mean, whatever it is, but it's regulated. No, rock music ain't gonna do any more damage. But